To reduce the risk of air bubbles, make sure the insulin vial is at room temperature when you fill the reservoir. Wipe the top of the insulin vial with alcohol and wait until it dries. Next, pull the plunger so that the top O-ring is positioned at the amount that you plan to use to fill the reservoir. Be careful not to pull the plunger completely out of the reservoir. Hold the reservoir by the blue transfer guard and connect it to the insulin vial by pressing down. Be careful not to push down on the plunger during this step. It is important to put air into the vial before taking insulin out. With the insulin vial upright, place your thumb on the plunger and firmly push the air from the reservoir into the insulin vial. Continue to hold the plunger with your thumb. Flip the vial over so the vial is on top. Make sure you are holding the vial with your other hand. Slowly release your thumb pressure from the plunger rod and the reservoir will start filling with insulin. When the reservoir stops filling, slowly pull down on the plunger until the top black O-ring lines up with the desired amount. Keep in mind, every small line on the reservoir represents about 20 units of U100 insulin. Tap the reservoir hard enough to make the air bubbles rise to the top of the reservoir. Slowly push up on the plunger rod to remove the air bubbles from the reservoir. Pull down on the plunger to fill the reservoir to the number of units desired. Repeat as needed until air bubbles are removed from the reservoir. Look in the window of the blue transfer guard to make sure no air bubbles remain. Any bubbles the size of champagne bubbles are normal, so don't worry about these. To avoid getting liquid on top of the reservoir, flip the reservoir over so the reservoir is on top. With the vial down on the table, hold the transfer guard with one hand. With your other hand, turn the reservoir counterclockwise, then pull straight up to remove it from the transfer guard. Be careful not to press on the O-rings. Disconnect the transfer guard from the vial and dispose of it properly. Now connect the infusion set to the newly filled reservoir. Make sure both the top of the reservoir and the connector are dry before connecting them. Liquid can temporarily block the vents on the tubing connector. This may result in the delivery of too little or too much insulin, which can cause hypoglycemia or hyperglycemia. If any liquid has gotten in the top of the reservoir or inside the connector, start over again with a new reservoir and infusion set. To connect the infusion set to the reservoir, hold the tubing by the connector and place it on top of the reservoir. Find the right position by turning and gently pushing the connector until you feel it slide smoothly in place. Turn the tubing connector clockwise until the reservoir and the connector lock with a click. You should not have the infusion set inserted into the body when doing this step. Tap the reservoir to make any air bubbles rise to the top of the reservoir. Purge the air bubbles that have risen to the top by slowly pushing up on the plunger until all of the air bubbles have been pushed out and you see insulin in the tubing. If you are not able to push insulin into the tubing, disconnect the tubing connector and then reconnect it. Unscrew the plunger rod counterclockwise until it completely separates from the reservoir. Be careful not to pull down on the plunger as you unscrew the plunger rod and avoid squeezing the O-rings as you do so. The reservoir is now filled and ready to be inserted in the reservoir compartment of your pump.